Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today we're going to talk about mirrors. Now here's a 1920s. Let's see if you can see the design without showing off too much. It's beveled glass, as you can see up at the edge. It has a very fancy hanger. Plaster work as well, as you can see here. Very nice. I spent seven bucks on this one here. I would expect because of the shape, it's shield shaped, as you can see. It has part of a label. Seven bucks, I'm probably could get 125 or better out of this mirror here. I'm not skittish on mailing stuff like that, in all honesty. As long as you take the time and the concern and the care for it, you can do very well. Now here's another large mirror. Now you can see my huge amount of storage behind me on the other side, but this is a very nice mirror. Uh, in fact, it's hard to see, but you can see the fabulous plaster work including figurals on it this is called a pillar mirror because it has pillars running down the side this one i spent twelve dollars on and i'm not exaggerating that's literally the price i paid for this i could have sold it before i walked out of the place i bought it at for way way more than that i had offers on it usually these style come in pairs i don't know what the deal is on that why they'd be pairs maybe on either side of a door but mirrors in general you can make a ton of money on just be careful wrapping them. Um, I've discussed some wrapping bigger items, but it's not as hard or as bad as you think. Some of these can sell for thousands. Now this pillar mirror I just showed you, I would probably get around $400 for that one on the open market. Pretty easily, pretty quickly. A pair of those, a real nice pair similar to that can go for around 1000 and a lot of the reason you can get these so cheap is because nobody wants to mail them. They have to go to an antique store really to be sold for most people. You'll see online in just a few moments here that people sell these for insane amounts of money due to that reason. There's not as many up, so there's more competition for the ones that do show up. Let's hop over there right now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here we are with one of the first examples. Now, you're never going to find something like this in my book. I've never even seen anything remotely like this. But it's sold for $15,000 almost immediately. It's an Art Nouveau. I would say more Art Nouveau than Art Deco. And Tony Gaudi Calvet, I believe, is how it's pronounced. Excellent, excellent example. You can't ask for much better than this. Hand-carved, really interesting design. Custom-cut mirror on this one also. Just a real fine example. I've just picked a few select ones just to give you an idea on value on some of these sorts of items. Now, this is another one here. This one went for over four grand. Now, this one's valuable because Denise Guitard is a well-known pottery maker. It did a ton of stuff worth a fortune on some of hers. This is from the 50s or 60s, so... There's mirrors just like this that sell for thousands. Most people don't know what they're looking for. That's the problem with stuff like this. Now here's a set of these. Sometimes you'll just find one of these with the candles in there. It's still a mirror, still something that could be missed. It's a sconce as well. $4,399. It's from the 20s. If you didn't know enough to buy this one here, you're probably in the wrong business, honestly. Here's a set, just similar to the ones that I showed you, but with swag on the top of it. These would be pillars. Again, they're mostly in pairs, whether they'd go on either side of an entranceway or something along that line. $2,850 sold straight out on these. Now, this one's pretty neat. This is a British from the Georgian era. George, obviously, the King of England. That is where it comes in from, just like Victorian era, Queen Victoria. This is pre her era. It's made to look like a tortoise shell. It has the divided pieces, as you can see. It is faux tortoise. Very early, very nice, $2,495. Just the uniqueness on this one should have drawn you to this one. Now, here's another one, Louis XIV. Now, that's more a style, I would say, on this one. Now, this one's extremely detailed. This looks gilt wood, so this would be gilt over wood. This is hand-carved wood. If that gives you an idea how much time it would take to carve this into wood. And then to gilt it on top of it. Just an exceptionally fine piece. This one even has filigrees into the border. As you see here, the flower and the loops on top of it have a gap between it. So $2,450. These are all just mirrors. Now here's a high Victorian style, it says. This is the peak period of the Victorian era. Very garish in design. It's very unique very fancy the wood is typical of what you'd find rosewood you see all the time 
just a real nice example, $2,250. It's well worth shipping these. Now, this is 62 inches. You might say, how are you going to ship that? FedEx Airborne, no big deal. It's shipped freight. You box it up or they'll pay somebody. Many of these listings say that you will have to arrange the shipment of this. So basically, the winner of this gives the buyer the $2,250 it went for, and they call and have somebody come up and pack this up. Now, if you haven't sold high dollar stuff, big stuff like this before, you can have the purchaser pay for all of that and deal with it. They already probably know somebody who they can have come out and pack it up. They probably have an account with people. High-end dealers will buy these also off of eBay and do this as well. I don't really worry about the size anymore. I used to be afraid and intimidated by this, but in all honesty, these high dollar ones, if somebody has the money to spend $2,200 on a mirror, they probably aren't going to be worried about paying three, four hundred to have it shipped in all honesty. That's what I've seen for many, many items. We've shipped all kinds of stuff. Sometimes you can have them picked up in person also, but shipping it is a perfectly legit thing. Just pay or have them pay for a shipping company. Calculate it all out before you do it. Have it weighed, the whole works, and you should be safe. Just be careful on stuff like this. If you're not sure, just do it as the buyer sets up it and put freight as you see on here, meaning that you will have to set up the freight, the buyer. So that's an option you'll see on tons and tons of stuff. Smaller ones, 24 by 36, are usually a good size to get. I'll be wrapping up something shortly and showing how I wrap it up that's 24 by 36 to give you a good idea on the average size of items like this that you will find and how to wrap it up. So stay tuned if you want to know how to wrap these types of items. Now, the next one here is another earlier one. This reminds me sort of of the Black Forest era. It is extremely finely carved. This is mahogany, $2,100. It has a shield or a crest on the top with a crown. This is a fabulous piece. Hunting, it reminds me of some of the Black Forest items from Germany, and that would honestly be my guess just by the designs, or possibly from England, but I'm steered more towards Germany on this one. Now you can get some of these cheaper. Obviously, this one might be a different case, but many people won't mess with it or won't realize the value. This is from 73 here. This is a Greg Copeland. It's a designer. It's an art piece. Nothing fancy. Something most people may not realize is worth that much money. It's signed etched into the mirror itself. Mid-century modern. It's a little late for mid-century, but it's still a nice piece. I would have probably added that to the title too. $2,000 on this one. Here's a nice Art Nouveau German one here. Fabulous, fabulous metal. Sometimes these turn out to be sterling also, but no doubt 100% typical Art Nouveau, fancy. Sold for almost $2,000 as well. Now here's a massive one here. This is an emperor style, very fine, $1,700. It's sold straight out at that price. Again, this is something that's marked as freight. They would pick it up. That is not an issue for most people. I have had many, many items picked up on my front porch that a company showed up and packed for me. Didn't have to do a thing. Once it was sold, they paid for it. Rain shipment and everything else was handled by these folks. So no big deal at all. You can have them pack it out on your front porch or wherever you want. So if you're worried about somebody coming in, it's no big deal. This is a typical thing. Happens all the time. I don't worry about size of an item. I only worry about how much money I'm going to make for the effort. That's the biggest factor in it. If you list this, you paid $500 for it, let's say, you're able to sell it for $1,700 and somebody else is going to do all the shipment and everything else, who cares? That's what I say on this. So, Here's another one. Now, this is a federal period. These round ones like this are usually federal, especially if they have the eagle. Early 19th century here in America. Very nice. It's a convex mirror as well. So it, it kind of makes a wide angle like a security mirror in, in most aspects. 21 bids, $1,668. Really nice one. Another Victorian, massive size, 110 inches. Freight. Again, freight. It's, it's not your enemy. It's just another option that most people are afraid to do. So most people won't shell out money. Let's put it this way. A mirror like this, even if it wasn't old but still had the same basic decorations, would still probably get you at least $1,000 no matter what. A lot of times at a sale, if there's not a lot of dealers around or it's out in the country or this stuff wasn't advertised, you can walk up on stuff like this and still pay hundreds of dollars. Don't get me wrong. It's going to cost you some money, but they don't know how to get rid of it otherwise. Some antique stores can't show out the money. They don't know enough about it. Who knows? There's a ton of reasons why these show up here even on eBay or at sales. Estate sales, you can literally find this type of thing quite often. Here's a solid brass, mid-century modern. 
Now, those in Patreon might have some callbacks and stuff like this. Now, this is a real good example of a mid-century sunburst. The atomic pattern arrays are similar to this as well. They all sell for good money. Modern, mid-century, just a key example of this era, $1,390. It weighs a ton, so this is a really nice example here. Now, here's another one. This one says Friedman Brothers. This is a company that's still around, if I'm not mistaken. This is not an antique. It's just very well done. It's a very fine recreation of a vintage Georgian mirror. Again, this is only 20, 30 years old, and it still went for $1,295. You're looking for the style. Obviously, the older, the better. This is a specific piece from the Friedman Brothers catalog, so this can be determined by some high-end dealers. I may not have known Friedman, but I probably would have taken a chance even knowing that it's newer just because of the detail. The detail on this piece is incredibly well done. It's one of the nicest modern day pieces like this that I have personally seen. Now here's an Italian Rococo. It's a style, the pattern, the design, the, the flurry of the top of this. This is a very nice example. Red and silver is what it says. A lot of times they would put red down and then silver over it. That's a whole style in colorization. Now this is from the mid-1900s. Really nice, fine example of this. $1,275. It's not a huge one. They're shipping it for $95. This is something that I would attempt to ship, 36 inches or so. People will buy these mirrors. People love decorating pieces that will fit on the wall. Decorators buy this. High-end collectors buy this. We've sold many high-end pieces to collectors and, and companies and businesses as well that will, again, turn around and use them for decorating pieces. So that's a whole field of people that purchase these sorts of items. I don't really worry as long as they're fanciful, they're extremely well done, I can pay a decent price for them to make a good profit on them. Don't go shelling at a thousand bucks taking a chance on something, but if they're very reasonably priced, I will take a chance as long as the detail is finely done. Now here's a newer one, a Ralph Lauren home, the home division line from Ralph Lauren. Crushed bamboo, it sold for 1250 bucks. It says it's a brand new store display. This would have sat in a Ralph Lauren store to sell Ralph Lauren items. It's probably just made for stores. Most of the fixture style stuff like this go for some incredibly high amounts of money. We have had some from stores that were closing. I've talked about it before. We go to closing business sales, and in some cases we will buy out with other people an entire store, everything in them, to get fixtures and everything. This is the kind of stuff that shows up in those sorts of places. It's 100% legit business, very easy to make some good money. They're charging no shipping, free shipping on this, but at that price, who cares? It's a very decent price. Really nice example here of, of a display piece. Now, the last one is a Jay Strongwater. This is enamel and jeweled. It has Swarovski crystal lead jewels in it. Really nice example. Um, he was a designer, is a designer, I should say. Any piece by him are usually handmade. Look at the detail on this piece. You should know enough by looking at this to sink a little bit of money into this. Some of these items go for some insane amounts of money, $3,899. And again, I started off with a $15,000 mirror. Mirrors show up all the time. We find them all over the place. It's something that many people don't mess with due to the size and the fragileness of the item. But if you take the time, you take some time to investigate and learn something about mirrors, you're going to make some good money, I promise you. You can sell them locally if you don't want to list them this way. You can sell them on eBay, local pickup only. You can sell them on Facebook. You can sell them in Craigslist. Mirrors always sell. Everybody has a mirror in their house. Everybody. The more money you have, the nicer mirror you're going to want to buy for your house. It's just the way it is. So there's buyers for every level of mirrors all across the board. Even small ones, kitschy ones, dresser mirrors. All of that stuff sells for some incredibly good money if you get the right one. As long as you get the right one, you can make some good money. It just has to be fine quality. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. That's some more items that we do look for. That's something you can make a lot of money on, as you saw. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.